Good afternoon everyone. Let us start. Remember we have been learning chapter 6 manufacturing industries. Today we shall discuss about different types of mineral based industries. Now let me present my screen. So aluminium industry or aluminium smelting. Let us read. So here we have uh, some photographs of smelting process. So this is a photograph showing aluminium smelting. And uh, we have uh, one more photograph showing uh, this aluminum smelting and here this is a photograph showing NALCO that is National Aluminum Company it is in India okay National Aluminum Company And here, so these are the products of NALCO, National Aluminium Company Limited. So let us read. Uh, aluminum smelting is the second most important metallurgical industry in India. Okay, the first being the iron steel industry. And aluminum is the second most important metallurgical industry in India. And about the properties of aluminum, you have learned earlier it is light, resistant to corrosion, okay, no rusting, then a good conductor of heat, then malleable, okay, malleable means capable of being sap or bane or drawn out and become strong when mixed with other uh, metals, okay if aluminum is uh, mixed with other metals then it becomes very strong okay and so it is used about the uses of aluminum it is used to manufacture aircraft that is aircraft bodies are made of aluminum alloy okay mixed with the other metals then it is also used in making utensils as you know and electrical uh, these wires Okay, it is a very good conductor of electricity as mentioned. And this aluminum industry has gained popularity as a substitute of steel, then copper, zinc, lead in a number of industries. Okay, so bauxite is abundant, okay, in India and on the earth surface. And so nowadays, uh, it has gained, aluminum has gained popularity as a substitute of steel, copper, zinc, lead. Actually, copper, zinc, uh, lead, zinc, these are very rare, okay, on the earth surface. So, it has been uh, replaced. This has been replaced by uh, aluminum whenever possible. Then, See, aluminum smelting plants in the country are located in Orisha, then West Bengal, Kerala, Uttar Pradesh, Satisgarh, Maharashtra, and Tamil Nadu. Okay, these are the states where aluminum smelting plants are uh, located. And uh, so this is another photograph showing uh, this NALCO, okay, National Aluminum Company. And we have one uh, map, okay, we have one map uh, showing uh, this location of aluminum plants in India. Here in Uttar Pradesh, we have Hindalco, Hindustan Aluminum Company. Okay, here at Renu, Renukut. Then in Satisga, we have this Balco, Bharat Aluminum Company at Korba. Capacity is also mentioned. Okay. Then and, uh, we have two here in 
Aurisa angul, a one at angul, another at Hirakun, okay. Nalko is at angul. Then Indal uh, is in Hirakut. Hirakun. Then we have Malko, Madras Aluminium Company, okay, at Metur. And another one is uh, here, okay, another uh, company, Indal, okay is located at Alupuram in uh, Kerala. So these are important aluminum plants okay, in India. Let us proceed. So Bausai, the ore, the raw material used in the smelter is very bulky, dark reddish colored rock. About it we have learned earlier. Okay. It is a bulky, dark reddish uh, colored rock, and uh, here we have a flow chart, okay, given below, uh, showing the process of uh, this manufacturing aluminium. You must know that regular supply of electricity and uh, an assured source of raw material at minimum cost are the two prime factors for the location of this aluminum uh, smelting plants okay this regular supply of electricity and assured source of raw material at minimum cost these are the two prime factors for location of this aluminum uh, smelting plants and this figure number 6.7 uh, tells the ratio okay of the uh, these about the raw material and uh, the product see here four to six tons of bauxite okay uh, obtains uh, from these four to six tons of bauxite we get two tons of alumina and uh, from two tons of alumina we get one ton of aluminum so the ratio is four is to two is to one or five is to two is to one or six is to two is to one so this is the ratio okay among the uh, this uh, raw material and uh, the product and here we have the flow chart showing the process of uh, manufacturing aluminum industry here we have a bauxite so this is the ore the raw material the major raw material for aluminum industry and we get uh, bauxite from the bauxite quarry Okay, from the mining areas, and uh, this bauxite is transported, uh, say, uh, using uh, railways or ship or any other means of transport. Then, here, okay, in the next step, uh, this bauxite is crushed. Okay, the gray, uh, the reddish colored uh, rock is crushed, and alumina is dissolved out. And so in the aluminum industry, okay, we need uh, this, uh, we need to transport this raw material, okay, bulk ore sieve to the site of smelter, then calcinated petroleum cork from a refinery required, then pits from a colliery, okay, pits means this coal from coal mine, okay, colliery means coal mine, so these are the other raw material used in the aluminum industry and here in the smelter side okay in the smelter side cryolite okay a molten metal acts as an electrolyte actually cryolite is a uh, this white uh, colored uh, mineral consisting of fluoride and aluminum and uh, sodium okay so it is used as an electrolyte and there we get from this after smelting this we get this aluminium and about the consumption of aluminium 18,600 kilowatt hour uh, per one ton of ore is required okay 18,600 kilowatt hour of electricity per 1000 kg of ore is required that you must know that then uh, 
any question regarding uh, this uh, aluminum smelting boys and girls do you have any question regarding aluminum smelting plants okay if you don't have uh, these questions then let us proceed next important industry is uh, chemical industries and chemical industry see we have uh, some examples okay so this is a photograph showing chemical plants this is just an example okay uh, seen from outside then inside it also we have another example this is inside a chemical uh, industry now let us read chemical industry in india is fast growing and diversifying okay it is a fast growing industry and we have different types of chemical industries in india and uh, this chemical industries comprises both large scale and a small scale manufacturing units and rapid growth has been recorded okay uh, in both uh, in organic and organic sectors so there has been rapid growth in the inorganic chemicals and the organic chemicals industries. So what are the inorganic chemicals? Inorganic chemicals include uh, sulfuric acid and it is used to manufacture uh, these uh, fertilizers, then synthetic uh, fibers, plastics, adhesive, paints, dye stuffs. Okay, sulfuric acid is used in different ways including this manufacturing of these cl uh, threads clots synthetic fibers then uh, nitric acid another inorganic chemical then alkalis different types then soda s soda s is used to make glass soaps detergent and paper and uh, caustic soda okay caustic soda you know sodium hydroxide okay sodium hydroxide and it is used in manufacturing uh, pulp and paper and then alumina then soft and detergent and these industries are widely spread over the country that means over India uh, these inorganic chemical industries are widely spread do you know why do you know why actually uh, these uh, the raw material okay the raw materials of chemical industries are non wet losing and that is why we can establish uh, in different places in india if the transportation uh, facility is good okay that is why it is widely spread all over the india then what are the inorganic chemicals inorganic chemicals include petrochemicals then uh, which are used, okay, which are used in manufacturing synthetic fibers, synthetic rubber, plastic, dye stuffs, drugs, and uh, pharmaceuticals. Okay, different types of petrochemicals are there. You may be learning polymers, then elastomers, okay, surfactants, like that. And uh, so all these are used in manufacturing uh, these fibers, then rubber. For example from elastomer okay we get rubber then say plastics also we get it from petrochemical then other uh, these pharmaceuticals drugs and other pharmaceuticals organic chemicals plants are located near oil refineries or pet uh, these petrochemical plants okay organic chemical plants are located near oil refineries so if you see this map you will see that it is very much associated. See, this map shows location of petrochemical industries in India. And uh, so here, these are, okay, red dot shows the location of petrochemicals industries. So, so these are refining areas also. Okay, if you see, if you read your textbook, you'll find it. Panipat, Mathura, Barauni, Bongaigaon, all these are refining areas. And nearby it, we find these uh, chemical industries okay organic chemical industries petrochemical industries see 
here we find maximum concentration of these uh, petrochemical industries in Gujarat and Maharashtra, okay, Jamnagar, Badodara, Koyali, Hajira, then Nagawatani, Mumbai, Ravale, Patangange. So here in Basaka, Bisaka Patram also we have refinery, uh, that is why we have one, okay, petrochemical industry. So the chemical industry is uh, is its own largest consumer. India is uh, also a largest consumer of uh, this chemical industry, and uh, these uh, basic chemicals undergo processing to further produce other chemicals that are used for industrial application. Okay, then agriculture or directly for consumer uh, markets. So basic chemicals are processed okay, to use a raw material to other industries like say fertilizer industry, then synthetic uh, textile industry, paper and pulp, okay, and uh, it is also directly available in the market for use. Any question from your side? So let us uh, proceed. So fertilizer industry, okay. And uh, this industry uh, centered around the production of uh, nitrogenous fertilizer, mainly urea, then phosphatic fertilizer and uh, ammonium sulfate. We call it DAP. And the complex fertilizer, we have a combination of nitrogen, phosphate and uh, potash, commonly known as NPK. Okay, so these are the different types of fertilizers uh, produced in our country and out of these three, that is nitrogen, then phosphate and potash, the third one, that is potash is entirely imported from other countries as we do not have any reserve. Okay, India does not have any reserves of potash okay which is commercially usable or uh, any form of this potassium compound in any form that is why potassium or potassium is entirely imported from other countries then after the green revolution the industry expanded okay uh, about green revolution then uh, we have learned earlier in chapter 4 a culture and to several other country okay this industry, uh, that is fertilizer industry, has been expanded uh, to several other parts of the country. Uh, see here, Gujarat, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh, Punjab, Kerala contribute towards half of fertilizer production in India. Okay, Gujarat, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh, Punjab, Kerala. These five states contribute half of the fertilizer production in India. And other important, other significant producers of fertilizer are Andhra Pradesh, Orissa, Rajasthan, Bihar, Maharashtra, Assam, West Bengal, Goa, Delhi, Madhya Pradesh, and Karnataka. Okay, so this is about fertilizer. And uh, here we have uh, some uh, say location of uh, fertilizer companies. Okay. Uh, this uh, red dot shows the location of fertilizer industries, okay, in Punjab also, in Haryana also, so many fertilizer industries are in India, okay, in Northeast we have in one in Namru, okay. Then next industry we have cement industry and you know cement is essential for construction activity that you have known okay such as building houses, factories, bridges, road, airport, dams and other commercial establishment okay and maybe industries or maybe hospitals, schools all these require a cement industry for construction. And this industry requires a bulky and heavy raw material. 
uh, like uh, this uh, limestone okay then silica gypsum then coal and the electric power are needed apart from rail transportation so these are the important raw materials and the factors for the establishment of cement industry okay important raw materials are limestone silica and gypsum and coal and electricity is also required as well as railway transportation okay is also required and i think or you might have seen it so this is a cement industry seen from outside okay it causes lot of uh, pollution so many dust particles in the atmosphere then here see here inside the cement industry okay crossing is done and uh, see here this is a, another scene of the cement industry okay crushing of raw material is done then uh, this industry has strategically located okay plants in Gujarat and have suitable access that have suitable access to market in the Gulf countries that means uh, many cement plants are located in Gujarat because uh, here from this that okay uh, the cement is exported to the Gulf countries there is so much demand from the Gulf countries from the Arabian Peninsula okay from the Arabic countries and that is why these cement industries are strategically located uh, in Gujarat and there in Gujarat and Maharashtra so we have uh, these international ports also okay for the export and uh, one information the first cement plant was set up in Chennai in the year 1904 okay so this may be kept in mind uh, for the objective type questions then after independence this industry has been expanding and improvement in the quality has been found has found to produce a really available market in this East Asia, then Middle East, then Africa, then Asia, apart from demand within the countries. That means, say, these uh, reasons, okay, East Asia, Middle East, African countries, South Asian countries demanded, okay, uh, this uh, cement. And uh, as well as there is a large demand within the country also and uh, this industry cement industry is doing well in terms of production as well as export okay and uh, we have this uh, map showing the cement industry okay see here this map shows cement industries and uh, drugs and the pharmaceuticals and uh, the triangle shape symbol shows cement industries see for example here we have one in combator then one in Bhadrapati. Okay, at Bhadrapati we have iron steel plant also. Likewise, we have uh, this Raspur, then Zabalipuram. Okay, we have so many Srinagar. One is there, Srinagar. At Guwahati, one uh, we have one. Durgapur, we have one. Kolkata, we have one. Okay, in Gujarat, we have uh, Bhamnagar, then Jamnagar, and so on. So, this map shows the distribution of cement plants in India any question from your side boys and girls unfortunately we have very poor attendance today okay let us proceed uh, next we have automobile industry okay so we have uh, two photographs here so this is an automobile industry in India okay and uh, we have one more here okay this is assembly line in an automobile industry car manufacturing industry uh, so let us read automobiles provide vehicle for quick transport of 
goods and services and the passengers so we have different types of automobile like uh, trucks buses cars motorcycles scooters three wheelers multi utility vehicles okay all these are manufactured at various centers in india and after liberalization okay the coming uh, and the coming in of the new uh, and contemporary models stimulated the demand for the vehicles in the market which led to the healthy growth of the industry including passenger cars and two and three wheelers so with the liberalization process means uh, actually this is a this is coming under the new industrial policy in which uh, okay less restriction is there in the establishment of industries and the coming of new models okay stimulated accelerated the demand of vehicles in the market the demand of cars and the other vehicles in the market and uh, this led to the healthy growth of industry including the passenger cars two wheelers and the three wheelers and this industry is located around delhi then uh, gurugram that is gurgaon okay gurugram then mumbai pune chennai kolkata lucknow indore hyderabad jamshedpur bengaluru so in these uh, centers we find major automobile industries okay see here we have some maps from mapsindia.com okay location of tata locomotives tata motors plants here okay this symbol we have one at uh, pathangar in uttarakhand then another one in lucknow in uttar pradesh then we have jamshedpur in jharkhand okay very famous one sannat in gujarat pune and uh, ranjangaon in maharashtra dharwad in karnataka okay and uh, one more major car manufacturing okay centers gurugram that is gurgaon okay we have maruti suzuki then noida kanpur kolkata pans mahal pithambar indore okay that is kurla mumbai then aurangabad pune uh, then rangareddy chennai tiruvallur bengaluru okay so these are the important uh, centers where these car manufacturers are located are you clear do you have questions regarding uh, this automobile industry or any other type of industry boys and girls okay then uh, let us stop here for today and uh, don't forget to send your names in whatsapp group for attendance thank you very much for joining my class